Okay, Fred, now you talk about Dawn Greening and how you met Dawn and what she meant in your musical life and her work at the school and all that sort of thing. I think there's any one person responsible for turning people on to folk music during the revival in the, in the 60s, in the early 60s. It had to be Dawn Greening. Uh, I remember first uh, meeting her at the Old Town School, just hanging out there. And, this was before uh, you were a performing musician? Or? No, it's when I was trying to be a performing musician. I had a, I had a, I had a job at, at the Old Town, a place called the Old Town Pump. It was Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, mm -hmm. 10 bucks a night and all I could drink. And I was still graduating <laughs> high school. And uh, it was kind of like a singles bar. It was you know, just an awful place to, to work, but it was, it was $10 to do something I enjoyed to do, enjoy doing. And I, I started hanging around the school with a couple people who was there, I met Dawn, who I was immediately in awe of, because, I mean, she knew people that I was in awe of, like, uh, uh, I was in awe of, you know, people like Pete Seeger and Bob Gibson and and uh, Odetta and Josh White and so, so the people that performed at the Gate of Horn and, and, uh, and people like Ewan McCall and A.L. Lloyd. And, uh, and I remember that, it, and I, then when I got the job at the Folklore Center, uh, I would go up and, and I was invited to sit down and, and classes, you know, if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was part of Dawn's giving nature and it was always, you know, she never did anything for herself. She yeah. always gave to people. It was an incredible thing about her. She just, uh, she just, she would, she would get Frank free to give the students at the Old Town School a special discount on the concerts. And, and Alan Ribbeck over at the Gate of Horn, you'd get a special discount. Yeah, that's in the article account. about her. So try and talk about some other stuff. If you can make it a little bit more personal. Oh, okay. See, because Steve Romanowski interviewed her for four hours oh. and wrote an article that includes oh. her talking about almost everybody except herself. So. I see. Well, she was she was very responsible for my, for my learning quite a bit. Um, she would. Uh, I remember it was one time that I, w I was sitting in in a class, and the second half of the old town school used to be an hour long, yeah. and it used to be one of the most exciting things because there was people that she that whoever was in town would come to the old town school. Mm -hmm. People like Judy Collins and and. Uh, People like if Seeger was in town, he'd come there, and so you got to see these people, and mm -hmm. and and also you got to. He'd also Ray at that time would bring up students from the the audience. He brought me up one time, the first time, and I remember seeing in the days of '49, and go, going back down to the old to the folklore center when I was on North Avenue, and uh, the office actually was, uh, well, Dawn was in the main room, and Dawn sat in there for the second half. And uh, she heard me sing Days of 49, and she came down to the Folklore Center, and she looked at me, and she says, you've got it. <laughs> you know, so that was really great. You know, and I was, I was just, I went, ah, 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 you know, and uh, any time, there was times, there was many times that I was troubled about commercialism, yeah. commercialism in folk music and things like that. I would sit and talk to her because she she always gave me great advice. Yeah. For one thing, she we were I would go up in the office and start bitching and moaning about something or something I heard or somebody or somebody or some performer or something like that, or some situation. And she'd sit down and he says, and I I said, well, what's your favorite music? You know, she'd say, you know what my favorite music in the entire world is, Library of Congress records. <laughs> when I really want to hear some really some what what folk music is, I listen to the Library of Congress music. Yeah. I would criticize something or something like that. She'd always say to me, always look for the best things in people, the best things in a musician, and dwell on that. Well, you can probably learn from the bad too, what not to do, but you learn what to do by watching what's good, and there's something good in everybody, you know. She really believes that, too. Yeah, she really does. And uh, I can't totally agree with her. <laughs> no, uh, but yeah, but she does believe it. Really I mean, is. that's one of the yes. things about her. Yeah, it was real special. I mean, it's yeah. really, it's, 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 it's like uh, if there's anybody a counterpart to Pete Seeger there, Dawn mm -hmm. Greening is, 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 is the person. Yeah. Um, what was it? Another thing she said to me. She said, "Yeah, I always look for the for the for the you know really the the, the good things and and, and 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 use that you know take that and use that." And uh, I just learned so much from her. I learned so much by by listening to her. You know by 
by watching her absolutely give to people. Yeah. And it was always that kind of a case with her. It's, it, it was just, she, there wasn't enough she could do. Yeah. I mean, she was just absolutely the, 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 the driving force be, be, be behind the Old Town School of Folk Music in the 60s. And she's what made it a, an exciting place to be. Mm -hmm. She's what made it a, a wonderful place. She'd go miles out of her way to get somebody to come in, and 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 she just couldn't do enough to turn you on, and that's exactly what it was was to turn you on. Mm -hmm. And she was always right. She was always right on. I mean, she had people up there like A. L. Lloyd, who was just fantastic, <coughs> and anybody, and you'd always see her at the concerts, and she'd always take groups with her. And if you weren't sure about somebody, she she just she jumped through hoops just to get you to go to see those those people, yeah. you know, because she she knew how necessary it was, and you were glad you went. You were absolutely glad you went. If you never heard of somebody, and she'd say, "Trust me," and, and yeah. you did, and it was okay. It was great. You had a great evening. Outside, she was just a, a fun person to be around too. She's just yeah. absolutely a, a wonderful, charming woman. Uh, and uh, her doors were always open. She used to have Sunday get-togethers at her house, and doors were always open to everybody. And I'm mean, a fantastic cook. <laughs> fantastic <laughs> cook. I mean, Epicurean, is that the word? Yeah. Yeah, she a, a, a true Epicurean <laughs> in the classic sense. And, and fed everybody and in town. And fed everybody. Sure. And the, the times we used to have over at the school when I worked down there with Johnny Carbo and Art Theme, and, uh, Years ago, were just something that 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 gave me a sense of, 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 of what kind of music I wanted to play and what mm -hmm. what it was really all about. Mm -hmm. Much more than getting up on a stage and getting my ego off or yeah. or 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 participate. It was a sense of participating in something that was just special. And and I've always I've always I've always maintain that I've always I've always kept that in me that's why I think why I get off so much on festivals on some of the good festivals when they when they really work because that's what the old town school was yeah I mean that was a festival every day yeah every day boy there were times we worked the folklore center we'd close the doors a little early in the afternoon and sit around with a couple six packs and listen to Jim Norris play classical guitar yeah and it was always music it was always music and it was always good music different kinds of good music. She was really, she did more to turn people on than anybody else. Especially for being a non-performer, that's quite an accomplishment. Yeah. You know, for somebody who wasn't a performer. But that was also part of it, that she never seemed to be measuring how good anybody was, except in relation to themselves. You know? Yeah. Yeah. She never had a yardstick out to say so-and-so is better than so-and-so. No, she never did. Absolutely no, never did. Never got into a, a competitive thing with anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, just you know, I guess she just said she she loved everybody. She really did. And she she looked for the good in people, mm -hmm. and she still does this very day. She's a wonderful, marvelous woman, and I'm proud to know her. Uh, she uh, she did a lot for me to 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 really set my head straight about you know music I mean she'd, she'd point things out and play a record or something like that and she'd, she'd say wow that really gets me that part right there mm -hmm. you know or that we talk a lot about Bob Gibson I, you know I was kind of I got turned on to Bob Gibson as a folk singer he was a banjo player and when he started mm -hmm. commercializing himself I didn't like him that much you know I, I got I was a little uptight about it but she'd point yeah. out you know just you know how fascinating the changes were yeah you know and what he was doing things like that she knew she really knew what somebody was doing uh, without without being a critic without being terribly critical on somebody she she could ab absolutely explain you know what what the hell was going on if you didn't understand or, or, or she, she it was always with this great sense of enthusiasm yeah you know you know like just and that's what made the school work yeah Dawn Greeny made the school work that's what was special about the school mm -hmm. and you know outside of the fact that you know, of course Wynn Strachey coming up and performing and being around and all them but she was responsible for all the wonderful people there mm -hmm. for getting those people over there for making it a fun place to be and an important place to be 
and a, a, a place for musicians who wanted to be professional musicians to grow and for people who just wanted to have fun with the music, which was more important mm -hmm. to her and, and those people than anything else was to have fun with that music and possibly say something. Yeah. You know, uh, just an, an <clears throat> incredible woman. Uh, one of my heroes, mm -hmm. if people have heroes. is one of my heroes. You know, it's one of the really probably unsung heroes. Uh, no, it, there, there are there are very few musicians that 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 I know that have done as much as Don Green to turn people onto music. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any other stories or anecdotes that you can think of? Oh, let's see. Turn off from the yeah. Yeah. Uh, she knew that I loved Pete Seeger. Mm -hmm. She absolutely, and so in the, in, in the early years, in the 60s, I used to go, every year Pete would play at Orchestra Hall. Yeah. And she knew how much I loved Pete, and she knew I was trying to grow up to be him. Yeah. And, uh, uh, when I, and when we first met, Pete was in, I think it was in October or something like that, at Orchestra Hall. I had already gone to a couple of concerts, but I didn't know anybody. Eddie and I would go. Uh, and, uh, this was, I think, it was 62 or 63, I'm, I'm around there. She came up to me, and she grabbed my arm. She said, come on over here, and there was Pete. And she said, I want you to meet somebody. And I was shaking. I mean, it was really, you know, I said, wow. She says, look, we're all going to have a get, we're all going to come out to my house. Would you join us? <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I just, I was flabbergasted. I was absolutely, you know. Yeah, well, you, were, you that, weren't even 20 yet. Then. No, I was about that. I think I was about 19 or 20 years old. Mm -hmm. And I was just absolutely flabbergasted, sat on the floor and, want, and watched Pete Seeger talk and eat cheese. You know? <laughs> and Studs Terkel was there and Wynn, and they were talking. It was in was 60. Uh, it was. Uh, 63, yeah, 63 yeah. was the year Kennedy died. They mm -hmm. were, they were, no, when was the election? When did Johnson get elected? 64. 64, that's when it's 64. And uh, if, I, if I remember the conversation they were talking about, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Johnson and, and the election and everything. Uh, but that, what a wonderful thing to do. Yeah. You know, and she knew, and she knew that, you know, she knew who was coming to town and, and, and she was just absolutely, and she knew, she knew the students. She knew each and every one of the students and, and what they wanted and, and just where they were going. And she would make sure that they were new and aware, were aware and got great seats to any concert they wanted to go to anywhere yeah. in the city of Chicago or anywhere, you know. And, uh, and there was a sense of, a great sense of community yeah. at that time, you know, uh, around the school. Because there was all different kinds of music and she knew who liked what and that those people were, you know, look, you know, uh, Flat and Scruggs are, are going to be in town, yeah. you know, I've got tickets here, prime seats, you yeah. know. And we got, and the Old Town School always got the prime seats oh, when Dawn sakes. was there and we always had a discount and uh, she made sure we knew about it. Yeah. I mean, it, it was just incredible. How did you feel when she started coming out to see you perform? Nervous. <laughs> really? Yeah. Absolutely nervous. But yeah. she was always supportive. I oh, absolutely. <clears throat> absolutely. I mean, I can get up in front of a lot of people and and know that it's okay and I've got their approval, but it, it's her approval that I want. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's I mean, she's a, as far as music goes or anything, she's as good as anybody else. She's as, yeah. as, as well, better than most. Yeah. yeah.